going on? This is City Wrestling Radio, and this is another, another wonderful classic edition. Oh, well, it's not a classic edition. It's another edition of our classic retro reviews. Yes, sir. I'm your host. I'm Corey Smith. I'm joined via my my co-host today, the main Rasta mate, pretty much the only other guy hanging out with me at City Wrestling Radio, Mr. Jose Oseguera. How's everybody doing? How are you doing today, Mr. Smith? My, this room is mighty empty nowadays, isn't it? Mighty empty? Oh, yes. yes. Well, you know, uh, oh, you know what? I should, I'm just, I'm just going to keep fucking recording. I'm not even going to, there we go. Background on now. Uh, (laughs) It's good. (laughs) I'm not going to start over. I don't want to. Uh, It's good. It's another day in paradise. You know, today we're here to review Slamboree 1993, you know, time only fears the pyramids and the legends of professional wrestling, <laughs> which is, uh, uh, you know, it's funny when you're, when we were watching a slam and anything, it's, it's retro, it's a, uh, it's legends night in WCW. And so it's a retro retro review. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hopefully we won't get any, um, Randy Orton in any dark locker rooms. I don't think we will, you know, Ho- no, you could, hopefully, yeah. um, these stars He's a teenager at this time right hopefully these three these stars won't get berated around you know by you know other current day superstars no no this is wcw this is actually the first uh i didn't know until like halfway through the show the first uh, induction into the wcw hall of fame they had a hall of fame what so and do those hall of famers now carry over into the wwe hall of fame they should hmm. They should. Vince, yeah. Oh, they they bought the whole property, right? Well, yeah, yeah. No, they did. Uh, but you know, it 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 begs to like, will you see? What was it, Mister Wrestling Two? Yeah. And uh, who was the other? I don't know. We'll get there. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. we watched the whole show. It took me like four or five sittings. It was. I really watched bad. it in maybe two and a half, three. Really? Maybe I was just. It was. I don't know. I I. This is the type. Some of the stuff on this show. Was the type of stuff when I watched when I was a kid, I would be like, ugh, dad, like, I get it's wrestling and I like wrestling, but like, mm, this is too wrestling for me. <laughs> um, and it was really ancient too, like, yeah. the beginning. The, the be- once this, once that Rick Rude match got started, then it, it started rolling. Okay, here we go. 1993, in effect. Yeah. But, this was like 1978. It was just a blur of a, of a show at the beginning. Oh, and it's a complete train wreck, too. The yeah. whole, like, pretty much the first half of the show is a complete train wreck, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's not, gonna, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the show. Uh, we kick it off with a starting of opening package. Uh, you know, this is obviously, it's 1993. We, you know, we would just reviewed WrestleMania 9, which... I mm-hmm. believe was 1993 too, and I think yeah, he was. It and was. now my TV's playing a fucking commercial. Awesome. Now it gets turned off. Um, yeah, so it's 1993. Uh, WrestleMania nine just happened, and now we're on to Slamboree in WCW, and the mullet mania continues. It does. Um, so, like I said, this was a NWA at eight and AWA Legends Night. Uh, we kick it off in the ring. Mister Wrestling two, Dory Funk Jr., Vern Gagne. And uh, Nick Bockwinkle and Dusty Rhodes, a bunch of legends of professional wrestling all in the ring. Larry Zabisco and Tony Schiavone are your commentators for the evening. Like I said, the, t- uh, the catchphrase of the evening, time only fears the pyramids and the legends of professional wrestling. Uh, we are told that uh, Jesse the Body Ventura is unable to be there tonight. Hmm. Uh, I believe. What happened, just, Jess? I, I think this is when he just kind of faded out of wrestling, right? I mean... He was probably doing movies around then, yeah. Um, Predator was what, like 89, 90? So yeah, he was he was dabbling in Hollywood at the time. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, we see Max Payne come out to the to the stage uh, with his guitar. Was that his guitar's name, Norma Jean? I think so, yeah. Uh, for a moment, oh, if this guy who was... Is, who is Max Payne? Please. Uh, you know? Wasn't he Did like a, rest, a wrestler for a second? Like a, like a second? Uh I have no idea. I don't remember this guy one bit. Dude, I was I was six when this came out, so uh, <laughs> I'm like, I have no <laughs> idea. But if this guy wrestled, he would have been the most over guy there because he came out and he was shredding on the guitar mm-hmm. and people were cheering for him. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was like, I was super into it. 
I was like, yeah, what is he about to do? And then all of a sudden, you hear Tony Schiavone, it's the queen of slambery! Oh, and then you see naked mullet extravaganza. And uh, what do you call it? Moolah. Naked mullet and oil. And <laughs> yeah, a bunch of, a bunch of I, I, I don't want to say jobbers, but let's say let's um, enhancement talent was carrying... Mula down to the ring in like an old school like sedan. You know, they're carrying an awful all fours, kinda like Cleopatra mm-hmm. style. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, I thought you meant like a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> they're just like carrying the car. <laughs> like, come on, guys. Uh but Mula sucks, so the less said about her, the better. Because that's all we get of her. You scared me when you said, Oh, Mula's being praised on this show, and I was like, Fuck, why did I pick this show? Mm. What would I do to myself? Well, I did a little Google search for, you know, the um, the VHS cover, and she was oh, she's prominently like, featured on the cover. I was like, oh, no, what's no. going to happen? <laughs> they were so just trying to sell tickets and, like, VHS copies <laughs> at the time. Because, yeah. like, that's the only appearance she makes on the show. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we get to Eric Bischoff and the first lady of WCW, the very beautiful Missy Hyatt. <gasps> um, she's always beautiful. They always. run down the show, but... <laughs> You know, she's one of those girls that you can tell she's putting, I feel like she's putting on that dumb gimmick. Like that, oh my God. I feel Mm -hmm. like she'd be like, yo. Because some of these guys were getting kind of weird with her throughout Mm -hmm. the night, like the legends, because they'd be interviewing the legends throughout the night and Mm -hmm. they'd be getting close. She'd be like, okay, cool. Get the fuck away from me. (laughs) (laughs) You gross old pig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Missy uh, with the whitest teeth I've ever seen. Uh, she could probably give Roman Reigns a run for his money. <laughs> uh, Eric Bischoff begins to run down the show. Um, with a, a, he says, uh, "Tonight we're going to see Sting versus the Prisoner, whoever that is." And then all of a sudden, the lights go out on uh, on Eric Bischoff and Missy Hyatt while they're trying to. <laughs> and, and Eric Bischoff, you can just tell he's like trying to. Ru- he's like running the show, and he you could tell he's kind of freaking out like internally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so what's going on here? That's here we go. Yeah, okay, so let's get this lights back on. And, and what else are we going to see tonight? Okay, oh, yeah. oh the <laughs> lights are back on. Yes, they're great. Wow, wow, wow. It only took 15, 20 seconds, guys. Yeah, and you could tell he was holding back the curse words. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in two fucking lights. Yeah, this is uh, this is like super baby face Eric Bischoff, yeah. too. So uh-huh. this is I'm in the middle of a fucking promo. Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck. You, you know when those cameras cut off. God damn it, Missy. What the hell? Mm-hmm. Just fucking... I don't know, Eric. <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> oh, lighten up. It's just the beginning. Nobody watches the beginning. It's oh, just moolah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Well, that's when she was still being cheered, though. Uh, mm. Well, I guess. I don't know. Um... Like I said, Eric is super distracted by the production problems, and it was kind of hard, uh, hard time following what they were saying while they were running mm-hmm. down the show. Yeah, and then we cut to uh, our opening match of the night, which was the new these two newcomers, beautiful Bobby Eaton and Chris Benoit. Oh my God! Versus two cold Scorpio and Marcus Bagwell. <laughs> so Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Marcus Alexander M A B. Man. Yeah, just just one short year ago, he was the rookie of the year for WCW. Uh, so Bagwell and uh, Scorpio have a uh, the, a theme that can only be compared to uh, kind of like a Grandmaster Flash song, mm-hmm. which I kind of like. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Scorpio and Benoit start the match. These two going back and forth. Uh, they made me believe. Uh, they kind of made me believe that they could be like like this at this point. Benoit and two Cold Scorpio was like the modern day equivalent of uh will osprey and ricochet in new japan pro wrestling hmm. you know very I mean? good like, uh comparison yeah because it was flippy shit for 1993 mm-hmm. you know what i mean but it was really good i, I really enjoyed yeah. it there was uh bobby eaton and uh benoit get the double the veteran tr- the grizzled veteran uh the veteran get the Don't stop letting you know that bobby eaton was a veteran well it's funny because they were I, I mean maybe they just referred to chris benoit as a newcomer but they were like, oh, these newcomers here, Bobby Eaton and uh, and Chris Benoit. I was like, okay, sounds good. Mm. Uh, Bagwell and Eaton uh, tag in, and uh, bag. Uh, my computer says Bagel. Bagel works the <laughs> arm on uh, on Eaton. Uh, heels try to double team Bag Bagel apparently again, uh, but he ruins their plans and delays flips uh, and flips Benoit into the ring. Um, then that, that's when there's talk of Bagwell not being DQ'd for this. Uh, you know, because he threw Chris Benoit out of the ring. 
So, at this well, that time, was an old school rule. Do you remember? Well, I'm but yeah, I, yeah. I, oh, you're about to touch I'm on it. Oh, please, to I'm sorry it, yeah. to interrupt. <laughs> at this time, WCW had the rule that if you threw somebody out of the ring, you were DQ'd. Uh, they, this is known as like one of the Bill Watts rules. Um, use of the barricade, ring post was forbidden. Um, the actual rules go as followed. In, di- in addition to those rules, uh, absolutely no low blue, low blows. Uh, first offense is a thousand dollar fine. Second offense, twenty five hundred dollars, and third offense, five thousand dollars. Another Bill Watts rule is all wrestlers are due in the building one hour before scheduled start time of the show, with fines again being implemented for uh, being late of one thousand twenty five and five thousand uh, dollars. Missing an event. Uh, you know, you can't miss an event. Wrestlers who are injured, can't perform, um, are still expected to make the town in order to show the fans of WCW that they're they're not falsely advertising talent. So if you're injured and you're not going to make a match, at least make the show. Uh, talking over the PA during the show is discouraged. Lewd hand gestures, all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It was very stringent. Uh, mm-hmm. Bill Watts wanted, uh, he wanted to take the... I guess the carny aspect out of it. Pure wrestling, damn it. Pure yeah. wrestling. Unbodied by wrestling in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. That's Lo- right long out. story short, though, Bagwell was not DQ'd for throwing um, Benoit out of the ring. Uh, Bagwell working the arm of Eaton. A big leg or big knee drop to Bagwell by Eaton. Heels effectively cutting off Bagwell. Uh, this match comes to a screeching halt, though, when Bagwell gets back into the ring. Uh, and this, anytime Scorpio is in the ring, it's really good. It's great. And when Bagwell gets into it, it's just, no. Cutting for slack. He's just rookie of the year. Yeah. Uh, towards the end of the match, Bagwell tackles Eaton out of the ring. Scorpio goes for a drop salt. They called it off the uh, top rope. Uh, he goes for the pin on Eaton. Uh, and it seemed weird cause it seemed kind of like a shoot for a second. Because Eaton mm. was really trying to break up the count. Like, mm. he wasn't working with Bagwell. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he wasn't yeah. like, oh, Bagwell's holding me back. I can't. He was literally like, no, get the hell off me, dude. I'm not losing off this me, match. Off me, motherfucker. I got tag to make. Cause, yeah, because they tried the spot twice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There was two spots where Scorpio went for the pin. The first yeah, time no, he's Eaton, probably pissed. The first time Eaton tries to break it up. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to not gonna sit here and assume things. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's just weird. To me, so yeah, no, it was it's a very sloppy finish. It, it looked it looked hectic and crazy. Yeah, uh, so. it was it was a botch in there somewhere, and you can tell Eaton was hot. So this was uh this was two matches in one. Like I said, when Scorpio was in the ring, it was fun and a good match. But when Bagwell was in there, it was like uh, pulling teeth. So yeah, 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 you know, classic match, hot tag in there uh, to make it fun. Benoit, you could tell there was something special in this kid, kid, Pegasus kid. Yeah. Um. Good rest. And, it, it, you know, it, it was fun. It was a hot opener. I liked it, uh, except for the botch finish, of course. Yeah. Uh, then we get uh, Heavy Metal Van Hammer. Oh, God. That guy had a, car- a career being a jobber at WCW. Yeah. <laughs> he was there for a long-ass time. I think until, until the company went out of business in 2001. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has a mystery opponent tonight, but Colonel Rob Parker comes out to the ring. The former, uh, or not former, but it, he is the future Tennessee Lee in uh, WWE. Where we actually had a little time reviewing him mm-hmm. in our Sunday night review show. Yeah. Ooh, that was torture then, too. Yes, Nothing's it was. changed. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so he, he brings out his newly signed talent uh, out to the ring, and it turns out to be uh, Sid Vicious. So Sid Vicious mm. comes out to the ring with his Kenny Omega inspired, inspired curls. Mm. Um, he just just locks of luscious hair. Like I, I almost think his soul was glowing on how luscious those curls <laughs> were. Just let your soul glow. Oh my god! Uh, let's, yeah, he comes into the ring, jackknife, power bomb to Van Hammer, pin, win. This match uh, was about thirty-five seconds. Mm-hmm. It was a Skowalsh match. I'm, I'm confused, though, because I thought Colonel Rob Parker was a heel, um, and then I thought so was Sid, And but the fans are cheering Sid. Like, Sid I'm is over. The Omni. Yeah, Sid is super over, too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, I don't know, he man. Just, he must have just got out of a ill-ass uh, WWF contract. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Then Eric is with two guys I've never heard of before. Was it like uh, was it like Red uh, Red Bastine? I didn't, I, I didn't even take their names down. Sorry. Oh, uh, let's see. I I tried to write them down. Let's see. I, hopefully, I got them right. It was like Red Bastine, which does does not sound right to me. <laughs> and Bug, oh Bugsy McGraw. Uh, okay. Bastine says he's excited to be there and he's glad he's not wrestling uh, because someone as powerful as Sid Vicious because Sid would take his head off. Uh, McGraw begins to start talking to Bischoff um, with his back to the camera most of the time. Mm-hmm. And that's when he goes, oh, okay, I'll turn around so the camera can see me. I mean, some of these legends, they, they're, they're, <laughs> some of them are really bad and some of them are like hilarious, hilariously bad. And some yeah. of them are just like, all right, I'll just roll with it. Like, oh, my back was to the camera? Well, of course my back was to the camera because you need to get my back. I, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of these were like house show central. House um, show promos, yeah. Yeah, and um, and it showed. <laughs> yeah. You could tell these guys, you know, they're older gentlemen. I'm, I'm sure they were having some issues. You know, CTE wasn't well known back then. Uh, speaking of older gentlemen, we get a legend six man tag match. We get dirty Dick Murdoch versus Don Morocco and Jimmy Snuka versus Wahoo McDaniel, Black Jack Mulligan, and Jim Brunzel. Jumping Jim Brunzel. Jumping Jim Brunzel. One half of the Killer Bees with B. Brian Blair. So you remember the Killer Bees? You guys remember those guys? No. no? There were the there were two guys, I mean, white were, guys that looked like, alike. Yeah. And once they put on the killer bee mask, they would do twin magic as we know it today. You can look, but you can't touch. Uh, so one bee would roll out of the ring while the fresh bee rolled in, and that fresh bee would take advantage of the heels and win the match. You can look, but you can't touch, I guess, right? And, and they were jobbers, but they had this bee magic that would work every once in a while on Saturday morning. <laughs> So Snuka and uh, Brenzel started the match. Hey, 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 Jimmy Superfly is a heel here? Well, he didn't murder somebody. Because any team, you're right about that one. Um, but any team with Chief Wahoo McDaniel is the face team. And that happens to be the one with Black Jack Mulligan in it? What? He was just counterfeiting money or something, right? <laughs> Do you want to hear about his uh, adventures sure. in 1992? Yeah. All right. Well, um, you're familiar with the uh, with the Wyndham family. So Blackjack Mulligan is the patriarch of that family with uh, Barry Wyndham, who we will see later and see him defend the NWA championship against one double A Arn Anderson. Well, they had a younger brother. His name was Kendall Wyndham. In 1990, they were both arrested by the United States Secret Service in a joint investigation with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. <sighs> Say that five times fast. And for what you may ask? For counterfeiting money. <clears throat> They found $500,000 in 1993 money, mind you, Mm -hmm. in phony $20 bills. As a result of the plea agreement, both father and the son spent 24 months in federal prison (laughs) and were released in 1992, just a year from this show that we're watching now. So that explains why Blackjack Mulligan was just like he... (laughs) He was acting like he had as much energy in that ring as some of the like 20 year old guys. Cause he's like, as let's go I mean, Marcus Alexander. Yeah. So, well, you, know, you know, Kendall, what I remember, he, he had some promise that kid, uh, very slim compared to his big brother, Barry. Um, but he had charisma. Uzi, not the wazoo, mm-hmm. uh, just, you know, can never get over as much as his brother. I guess he was just stuck in the shadows. And we know that this family, Gave birth to uh, our Bray Wyatt Wait, and what? our is it Bo Leave. It's part of the family. Mike Rotunda married into the family. I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Mike Rotunda it married the the youngest of the Wyndhams. Okay. I think her name was Deborah. Deborah Wyndham. She had she had long, gorgeous long blonde hair, just like her brother. I'm sure she did. Yes, yes. Uh, so, like I said, uh, Snuka and. Was it Brunzel started the match, exchanging locks back and forth. Mulligan aching to get in the ring, get that tag early. He wants to make that money. But the dirty dick tags in and begins working on Mulligan until Mulligan stops him with a hip toss. Dirty dick tries to leave the ring, but then is stopped by Wahoo. Wahoo and Morocco tag in and trade holds. 
Wah, who hits a series of slams on Morocco. The Dirty Dick and Snooka <laughs> uh, use their heel tactics behind the ref's back. Uh, Shivani mentions how the Dirty Dick was so much fun at Slam Fest the night before. And that's when the Dirty Dick leaps into the air and hits a leg scissors to take out, uh, was it Brunzel? And so. which was like, I, I, the, and fans went crazy because uh, Dirty Dick Murdoch, how do I put it? He looks like an old, uh, they're all old men, but he looks yeah. like a, a skinny out of shape old man who has a giant beer belly. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And he just jumps in the air and does his leg scissor takedown <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. And I think everyone in the crowd was just like, holy shit, what just happened? Did yeah. grandpa just do that? But that dirty dick did the leg scissor takedown. He but yeah. And did you catch this one little uh, tidbit from Larry Zabisco spilling some tea on uh, Brunzel and Don Morocco and some type of love triangle? Is no. that kayfabe what or was not? This? What was this? I didn't. I didn't hear. I, I, he said something like, "Oh, and there's a love triangle between uh, Brunzel and Don Morocco. Uh, they're both fighting over the same woman, or, or something to that effect." You know. Um, so I was yeah. just wondering if that was kayfabe or not. Like, was he like really telling some backstage for uh, heat, or was it was this part storyline? It has to be for real, right? Because these well, guys was, aren't relevant in the league right now. There was a lot of stuff that I feel like a lot of people were trying to get over that night. Uh, that was just like, like everyone's like, we should do this, and then Eric was like, no, and they're like, okay, I will, thanks. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And you, Zabisco, you know what? This might have been like his NWA really carried uh, these old guys. So it might have been an NWA storyline. Yeah. I imagine. Um, so let's see. Where was I? Yeah, where's um, the biscuit was pretty corny. Um, the Lake Scissors off the top. Yeah. Uh, Morocco tags in uh, isolating uh, Brunzel, and that's when the Dirty Dick tags himself back into the ring, and the Dirty Dick hits the Dirty Dick knee drop to the back <laughs> of Brunzel's head. Uh, partners Don Morocco and Snuka get in after. Snuka gave Morocco a uh, receipt from earlier. Um, there's a double roll up, uh, and I'm just confused because Tony Schiavone goes, like, there's a double roll up and there's some, as a pin and account, but nobody knows what's going on. Even Tony Schiavone's like, wait, was that two or three? Yeah. And uh ref, I think Randy Anderson calls for the bell and, uh, no person can separate all these, uh, worked up old men. And I guess it's a double DQ. I guess. <laughs> this match got a uh, one and three quarter stars on uh wrestling as a newsletter uh, wow. back in 93. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was just bad. I just, I did not like it. I did not enjoy it. Uh, yeah. The, you, the only you thing I enjoyed cool about this match though. What? You can make a vice special out of each and every single one of these guys. <laughs> the dirty dick. That's all <laughs> I want to see. This is a bad match. I feel like WCW uh, took the wrestlers word that they could still go. Like mm -hmm. a lot of this. I mean, they they went kind of. Oh, right? No, wasn't there like who was? I think it was later in the night. There was, there was somebody that was just like, just kind of standing around the ring. Oh. I'll get there, I guess. Mm. Uh, where was I? Okay, double DQ. Then we get to the Missy Hyatt uh, segment with the assassin and Mad Dog Vashon. Um. Oh, and Eric, was it or with Eric Bischoff? Missy. Oh, was it? Uh. So, oh, uh, Dave Meltzer wrote Eric Bischoff. He, ah, he messed up. We watched it. Uh, the Mad Assassin, who... Uh, so, Assassin's a little bit bigger in this, but he's still got, like, the same mask. Um, mm -hmm. I would have suggested to buy a bigger mask because, yeah, it didn't look too flattering on him. Mm -hmm. um, and he challenged Dusty Rhodes again for some reason. I, I don't know why. Like I said, this is one of those things where I think people were like, I'm going to try this, and they were like, no, and they were like, thanks. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, a little pipsqueak Eric talking about watch me get this over. Yeah. Uh yeah, exactly. So I mean, it was what it was. Missy uh Missy though asked Mad Dog uh what he's doing and he said he's uh he's there to fall to for his fellow Canadians and the millions of Mad Dog fans around the world. Cause, you Atlanta know, goes nuts. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh Missy then turns toward the assassin and and oh yeah. Mad Dog, though, cracks me up because he grabs the mic back from Missy. He's like, I'm not done yet. All these guys are lucky I can't wrestle because I'll show them what it's like to wrestle a Mad Dog. And then he got all DMX on him and started barking at the camera. Mm -hmm. um, 
like I said, the Assassin Challenge, Dusty Roads, anytime, any place. So there you go. Uh, then we get another Legends match, uh, tag match this time. <laughs> Ivan Koloff and Baron von Raschke versus nope. versus nope. Thunderbolt Patterson and I guess the newcomer at the time, or did they consider him a legend at 31? <laughs> Bullet Barb Armstrong. Yeah, nope. What? You know what I did? I fast forwarded this match. I don't do that very often, but I did this match. I knew uh, what was in front of me, and I said no. I think no WCW. I think I, I, think I took. I think I took too many. Oh, this is the match where I think uh, it was Baron von Roschke that was like just like walking around. I'm glad I missed it because Baron von Roschke at this point, like he probably looks the oldest out of all these guys. I don't mm-hmm. know why they let him in the ring, like. He didn't look good in tights. Like, he, what? What? I can still go, Eric. Trust me. All right, but I like, I think the only thing he had, strongs. the only thing he had was the claw. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Bob isn't going. Oh, so Bob Armstrong though isn't there though. Um, he uh, apparently due to a knee surgery, and uh, that's when uh, Thunderbolt Patterson says he'll take both men on. And God bless uh, Thunderbolt Patterson. He. He was working it, but he was, he had the crowd over cause he's from Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like he mm-hmm, was a, mm-hmm. a local favorite, but he just, he kept doing like this weird thing where he was just like doing this the entire time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like this, like racist, like shuck and jive thing. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. what I got from it. Like, and that sounds like it. Cause he wrestled, I think in the seventies and eighties. So mm-hmm. I don't know, but he was super over. Everyone liked him. He, you know. Rocky Johnson gave me permission to do this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, out comes uh, Brad Armstrong, who is Bob Armstrong's brother and I or son, and the brother of Road Dog Jesse James. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes out says he'll take on. He says that, you know when one Armstrong's missing, another one takes its place. And <laughs> there's like ninety of us. Watch out. <laughs> we are Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Venom, dude. Yeah. Not not like bad like venom in your veins like venom the symbiote from Spider Man. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want Jesse James to get mad at me. Uh, Patterson uh, uh, yells, uh, "Take your shirt off!" And uh, let's do this for some. But Patterson doesn't take his shirt off. Mm-hmm. Like he tells Brad to take his shirt off. And Brad's like, "Yeah." Patterson's like, "Okay, cool. Let's do this. I'm gonna, mm-hmm. keep, I'm gonna keep mine on if that's all right." Um. Patterson escaping Baron von Raschke's headlocks. Uh, Baron. So yeah, Patterson um, yells, take your shirt off to Brad Armstrong, even though he decides to keep his on. Armstrong working on Koloff. Patterson on Raschke. Uh, Patterson escaping Raschke's headlocks. And Baron um, uh, get, gets out of the match early. Uh, Baron locked in the claw, the claw on Armstrong. Uh, that's when the Thunderbolt works the heels. Thunderbolt hits a throat shot to Baron and gets the pin. So you, yeah, you, you missed a great match. Four minutes and 39 so. seconds. I'm kidding. Uh, this was, it was, a, I thought it was a little bit better though than the six man tag. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I thought Patterson, uh, Thunderbolt Patterson looked good. Koloff looked decent. You know, did Koloff didn't look bad at all. You know, he looked like a jacked old guy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just Baron. I just don't know why he was allowed to. Uh, he, he he didn't take any bumps, so. Yeah. Well, Koloff is one of those guys that looked old when he was young. So when he looked, when he reached his looking age, it's like, wow, you haven't aged a, a day. He's like Tommaso Ciampa, like nowadays. You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that guy looks like he's like 50, but I think he's like 36 or something. You know? Yeah, he's he's been 49 for like 10 years. And then we get the next segment of the evening. We get Flair. Oh, my favorite segment of the night. Flair for the gold. Woo! It's a Ric Flair's talk show segment. Which this, is, and this is prime Ric Flair, man. But this is this, like this is like post four horsemen, but like mid because this is like the four well, horsemen. There's been, there's been many incarnations. This is I wanna say mid Pre- this is like right in the middle yeah this is mid yeah it's it's post okay we we see that they're turning on Wyndham, but i think the next oh yeah paul roma is the, oh let's go through the segment and then we'll talk about it yeah uh so the announcer says uh the four horsemen the original four horsemen will be reunited tonight uh welcome back Oli. uh <laughs> flair uh is like i said is a 90s talk show host uh Arn anderson is introduced uh tonight he says because he has a match for the nwa world championship 
Now, he's see, another one of those uh, Forever 49 guys. No, absolutely, yeah. Uh, now, see, this is the confusing part. Uh, I'm going to get into the NWA WCW championship thing right here. Mm-hmm. Is that I? Um, I always thought that the NWA the NWA title was the WCW title, but it's like it's confusing because it is and it isn't. You see what it, I'm saying? It is the equivalent of the merging of the world title and the heavyweight title. Remember that? So I, I looked it up, and this is what I got from it. This, oh. this is a little bit. Uh, this is uh, pulled directly from the headlines of Wikipedia. By early 1985, Jim Crockett Promotions controlled most of the NWA territories and limited championship matches to performers under their contract with Jim Crockett Promotions. The the big gold belt version of the NWA title uh, debuted February 14th, 1986 at Championship Wrestling from Florida. Ric Flair? In a a card called Battle for the Belts 2, where NWA World Championship champion Ric Flair... uh, defended the title against Barry Windham. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was during this time that Jim Crockett Promotions made a failed bid to go national and almost went into bankruptcy uh, to compete with WWF. Turner Broadcasting then purchased the company because uh, of its high-rated programming on WTBS, mm-hmm. uh, completing the deal in November 88. Turner began changing the company to World Championship Wrestling under a partnership with the NWA and continued promoting the NWA World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair. Legacy issues. Mm-hmm. So WCW stayed in the NWA, but Turner slowly phased out the NWA name. The NWA organization existed only on paper at this point. On television, it was portrayed that the NWA World Heavyweight Champion simply became the WCW World Heavyweight Champion by late 1990. Mm-hmm. Due to a falling out with WCW executive vice president Jim Heard Flair, well, we know this part when Flair took the title to WWF, you know, the big gold belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when they established, I'm trying to skip ahead. Uh, that's when they established the other title, you know, the the other WCW title. Um, you know, the one that uh, Ron Simmons won, the one that Vader was holding. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Is that not a big belt? No, that's not the big belt. Mm. That was the smaller WCW, the replacement belt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the world the world championship belt. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so then eventually uh, when the NWA, the NWA champion was the big gold belt, and then that just kind of became their title, they started referring to that as the WCW world right. championship, started phasing out it, the It name. was the cooler title. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do like that smaller one, but that smaller one, I mean, it uh, it's not the big gold belt. It's yeah. just not. Uh, Flair says Wyndham and Tully aren't going to show up tonight, and the show must go on. So Flair introduces Ole Anderson. Ole comes out and says, what did I tell you about Wyndham? You can't trust him, and you can't trust that damn kid Tully, too. <laughs> it's, it's funny seeing Tully Blanchard being referred to as a kid. Uh, Fla- uh, another Forever 49. <laughs> Flair introduces his main guest of the evening, the newest member of the of the Four Horsemen, Mr. Paul Roma. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Pro- Paul Roma comes out and uh, he says, I-, I appreciate being here and some other words, uh, but he doesn't say much. He just, you know, I appreciate being part of the greatest faction. He was all looks. He was all looks. He's yeah. the muscle of the, of the well, crew. Well, mm-hmm. he's he's known as, you know, one of the worst four horsemen of all time. I would agree with that. Um, you know, I think even worse than Mongo. I'm just being nice to Mongo because I know he's going through health problems right now. <laughs> so I'll say Roma gets the worst right now. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Feel well, better. You, we're, we're, you know, yeah. Feel better, Mom. Feel better. Feel better. You you filled us with in, uh, infinite memories and joy of your matches. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, Johnny Valentine then joins the commentary table <laughs> because he can, and they had to use him for something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, then we get Nick Bockwinkle versus Dory Funk Jr. Oh, this is going to be a barn burner. <laughs> Fucking Christ, man. 15 minutes time limit draw. I'm just going to say it right now. They, they they really played up to the AWA days, didn't they? I mean, it, I just, I don't know, man. It, it, it was. 
It was a dry, old, outdated style that used to put butts in the seats, but now they put butts in the bathroom. Yeah, no, it was bathroom. it was good, and compared to like, com- if you compared it to the wrestling of their heyday, yeah, it was really good. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, they're, but they're those doing matches were meant to wrist locks, wrist bathroom, locks. Right? Yeah, no, and then the finish. Yeah, those finishes were made to bring around town to town to town to get everybody juiced for the main event at Madison Square or the Omni or wherever AWA was doing their you know main shows out of. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those matches, you know, pre cable, pre instant uh, viewing pleasure that we have now. So it it didn't make sense for 1993. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, sh- one strike back and forth between the two. Uh, Valentine, I forgot he was there on commentary at a certain point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bach Winkle has a hammer lock locked in for about three minutes. Funk strikes back. Uh, gets Bach Winkle in a modified headlock. Um. <laughs> oh, but I do love the one the, this match though. There is these two old women sitting ringside, and they're just like, "Yes, mm. mm-hmm. they're so excited. This they're so shit. into yeah. the match." And mm-hmm. they these women look to be like in the nineties. They look to be in their sixties. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. nowadays they would look like they were in their seventies or eighties. Yeah, but they yeah. Um, I stopped taking notes for about five minutes too. At a certain point, <laughs> okay, and I was just like, okay, you, you actually heard my notes, so I was just like going back and forth. They're just oh, wrist lock. Oh, he threw him. He oh. hammer lock. Oh, tip toss. Uh, oh, eventually, tip toss. there was a pile wow. driver to Bach Winkle. Though he gets his foot on the ropes, Bach Bachy though slowly reverses a hold. And God bless Tony Schiavone for trying to get some excitement. Oh, oh my God! Wait, he's trying to reverse the hold. I'm like, dude, just- <laughs> no, he's not. He's checking his watch. Uh, spinning toe hold to Bach Wangle. Bach Wangle locks in a uh, uh, locks in the figure four for Gene Knitsky to attack the ref, and the ref just allows it to continue because he's like, "Oh, what's this old man going to do?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, the most excitement of this match, though, is when fans were uh, chanting down for the time limit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, "Thank God, <laughs> five, four. Yeah, uh, I don't know how I could rate a ma- uh, this match. I don't even know how I could even be like, oh, this was good. I mean, sure, it was good. It was wrestling. Wrestling! You know what I mean? Have you ever been to a show and then, like, at indie shows, when they, they set, like, you hear just, it's quiet. There's just, like, moves going on. And then someone just goes, wrestling! Because that's what it is. It's just like, okay, great. But, like, you got to get some excitement into this. Oh, you're glitched, aren't you? Yeah, you're super glitched. All right, wrestling. Wrestling. Uh, yeah, so like I said, this is, if you want to become a pro wrestler, you should probably watch this match. 100%. If, if you're a wrestling fan and you just want to go back and say, oh, the, the heyday of wrestling, sure, watch it uh, back with the background. You know, if you have a podcast, watch this match. Yeah, or if you just want to watch two old men wrestle, go watch this match. Uh, Eric Bischoff uh, with Luthez and Bob Geigel, and yeah. Uh, then we get to Ravishing Rick Rude and Paul Orndorff versus the Natural Dustin Rhodes and Ken Kensuke Sasaki. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't Paul Orndorff be considered a legend at this point? No, come on. But he's totally active. He's he's Paul Orndorff. I know he's super, Mister Wonderful, Mister Wonderful. And I love how he comes out. He has they both have robes. Him and Rick Rude. Mm-hmm. It's kind of reminiscent of. There was actually a lot of things on this show that I felt like Vince watched this show, Slamboree '93, and remembered mm-hmm. this show. Because remember Gable and um, Bobby Roode, mm-hmm. they came out with matching robes. It totally reminded me of Orndorff and Rick Roode. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just Legends Night in general. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and they felt very Hollywood blondes before the Hollywood blondes. Or do we? We got the Hollywood blondes. We never mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I completely uh, forgot about that. Wow. Uh, uh, Kensuke Sasaki. Sasaki is, uh, he was a tag team partner of, what was it, Hawk in mm-hmm. Japan. He was the one, I don't know if you watched Dark Side of the Ring, the Road Warriors episode, but when Hawk went back to Japan 
and wrestled uh, with another partner at, as the Road Warriors. You know, mm. this was his partner. It was Sasuke. Yeah. Sasaka. Uh, Sasuke. Sasuke. Sasuke, yes. Sasuke. Uh, so before the match, Rude taunts the crowd, calling him fat, out of shape, city sweat hogs. Oh, I love that gimmick, uh, man. Rick Rude. Oh, I miss Rick Rude so much. He, he was probably, <laughs> he's probably such a nice guy, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, weeks prior, Dustin uh, pinned Rude for the U.S. title, uh, but there was some controversy when uh, when both shoulders weren't down, but Rick Rude was able to get up a 2.9, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. He basically got the title from him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kensuke and Rude start the match. The, where do, Like I said, where does Kensuke fit in? So what happened was is Kensuke injured himself in Japan, uh, and then Rude was granted the U.S. title match against Dustin. So Kensuke was supposed to face Dustin for the U.S. title, but he injured himself, and then Rude got the match, won the title, and now Kensuke is, since he's a face, he's like, that wasn't fair. Let's wrestle. <sighs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, it makes sense. Sure. I, I dig it. Rude hits a series of strikes. Kensuke working the left arm of Rude. Kensuke um, has Rude... Um, in a headlock, I believe. Rude tags out, uh, and Kensuke... In, oh, he has him in a wrist lock. And Rude tags out and grabs Orndorff and then instantly puts him in another wrist lock. Yeah, yeah. And then he tags Dustin in, and Dustin applies the wrist lock. <laughs> it was just like, let's trade this wrist lock off like five or six times. So Yeah. Uh, Dustin, and Rude are, Dustin and Rude are finally in the ring together, and the crowd finally comes alive. Dustin runs wild uh, for a minute or two until Rude was able to capitalize by ducking Rhodes to allow him to fly out of the ring, which you know, could be a DQ. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Orndorf beats down on Dustin, ringside slamming his head into the barricades behind the ref's back. So Bisco keeps pointing out that uh, Sasuke, oh, we don't even know if he speaks English. He, he might not even speak English. How can he mm-hmm. work with Dustin? Yeah. He doesn't speak English. <laughs> sure he's fine um (laughs) they'll they'll figure it out yeah back and forth pile driver reversals between rude and Rhodes. hot tag to sasuke and he runs wild on rude with a clothesline and an atomic drop sasuke then uh pushed off the top rope by orndorff we get a rude awakening the pin and the win this is a decent match uh probably at this point best match of the night uh in my opinion yeah yeah um I mean, I'm, I'm marking out here because I'm seeing Rick Root again. Um, seeing the Root Awakening after, you know, X amount of years and not seeing that move. It's a great, wonderful surprise. It's a great day. And Dustin can go. He can go any decade. 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. Yeah. yeah man. You name it, he can go. Um, G-O-L-D-D-U-S-T. Mr. Goldust himself. I don't know why I said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, you know what's what's an interesting tidbit when uh, discussing the language barrier between Japanese and American wrestlers? You know what the what the handshake language is? No, Espanol. See the handshake. What do you mean? Okay, like, me. you know when they're trying to communicate with each other, Japanese is too hard for the American to know. The Japanese oh, are in constant in relationships with Mexico, yeah. so they a bunch of them know Spanish. Oscar knows Spanish fluently. Yeah, so does uh, Tetsuya Naito. That's how I that, so, that's how I communicated with him. I, I, Spanish, when, when, you know yeah, saying? when I yeah. met him, we did a picture, and uh, at the photo op, and I took a picture with him, and he turned around, he made sure to shake my hand, and I said, I looked, and I said, "Gracias," and he said, "Oh, gracias." <laughs> I was yeah. like, "Yeah, awesome." I was like, "We know how to speak a different language." <laughs> we, I mean, we I, I'm sure he knows way more than I do, though. Uh, then we get Gordon. He, he probably just knows how to say clothesline in Spanish. <laughs> He, yeah, he, yeah. I mean, I think if you can order food and you can do your work in another country, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, <laughs> Pretty mm-hmm. much say you can speak that language. Uh, Gordon Sully, though, he comes out to the ring and Mr. Gordon Sully is going to introduce the WCW Legends Hall of Fame. This is boring. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah. So uh, who are the indi- inductees there, Mr. Smith? So let's see. Uh, first off, they want to pay memory to the fallen... Uh, wrestlers, the fallen legends that have passed away in the squared circle. So Buddy Rogers, Andre the Giant, Pat O'Connor, Gene Anderson, Dick the Bruiser, and and more. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, they have a moment of silence, which is about 15 seconds. They're like, let's have a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, inductees to this year, we have uh, Luthez, Vern Gagne, Mr. Wrestling 2, and Eddie Graham. Unfortunately, Eddie passed away. Um, but Fortunately? Unfortunately, I said. <laughs> Fortunately, he passed away, and his son was the, his, his fucking serial killer-looking son. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but that guy just looked like a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His son, he was like, where's my father's fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being a dick, but damn, he did. Uh, then we get uh, Missy Hyatt. She's with... Uh, oh, did you want to say anything about the Hall of Fame? Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Missy Hyatt with Mr. Hawaii, James Valier. And uh, I felt like James Valier was the only one that had a chance with Missy. <laughs> Because <laughs> he, he he was actually tan and in shape, and he yeah, was yeah. Like, she's like, you know what? I can teach you how to surf, Missy. She's like, hmm, maybe. yeah, all right, cool. Uh, then we get the special bounty match versus the debuting prisoner. Ooh, who's the prisoner? Who's he gonna be? I don't know. It's fucking nails, dude. Yeah, nails. Oh my god, he sucks. Nails is horrible. Well, it's, it's, uh, well, I don't know about today, but in 1993, it's Slambury. And uh, the fans didn't like it either because I think the fans were chanting bullshit at a certain point. Well, yeah, you hype up this Sting appearance, and Sting is like the linchpin of your of your company right now, and you feed him the prisoner? It, I'm, I'm guessing it's to advance the storyline, right? This is something to do with maybe Ric Flair so, hiring people to take out Sting or something? So what the original... So who was originally supposed to be there? It was supposed to be Scott Norton. Scott Norton, yeah. And he was they announced the one, that at the beginning of the card. Yeah, yeah. He was originally supposed to be there. That's why the prisoner came in. And it's just I don't know. I feel like they just couldn't get him, so they were like, well, "Who do we have?" You know, mm-hmm. who's at the power plant? The prisoner. We just signed him. He was in WWE, and he comes out with a nightstick too, which was weird to me. Like, well, no, what? he had to steal the nightstick in order to get out of jail. Wait, 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 why, why is he called a prisoner? Why isn't he called the ex-con? The, the escapee. That I, that I would actually make more sense because he left WWF. Yeah. The escape. Jailscape. Yeah. yeah. The the jailbird or something like that. <laughs> Have him with like a big bird on the back of his. <laughs> 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 I'm the jailbird. He just comes out like, <laughs> He flies through the night. So uh, this is a horrible and, match. And you know what? In 1993, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't bet against that being on somebody's drawing board page. Yeah. Uh, this <laughs> this is a really bad match. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, Sting. This is a waste of Sting. Sting tried. Sting tried to do stuff, but the prisoner is not a good wrestler. No. And when since when was the close close line off the top Sting's finisher? Dude, I think the referee was like, "Let's just take it home." One, two, three. Let's get out of here. Well, that was before the time when they had the the ref uh, like wired up with an earpiece and everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just like I don't know what the hell happened in this match. I don't know. It was bad. It was bad all around. And the less said about it, the better. Because yeah, even Nails is like choking Sting with a cord, and the ref's like, "Come on, Nails! Like you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, you go into business for yourself, <sighs> buddy. Come on." He's like, dude, I'm supposed to be tough. Yeah. My character would do this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this match was horrible. I actually preferred Dory Funk Jr. versus Nick Bockwinkle earlier in the night to this match. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I wasn't expecting a lot from this, but mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting this shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. After the match, Shivani goes, It's apparent the prisoner has made an impact in WCW. And I'm like, How? Really? By losing? Yeah. Like, by, by pushing Sting to his limits of two minutes? Oh, how long was it again? How, I wrote it down. <laughs> I don't know how long it was. I think it was like four minutes. Uh, I see. I got it right here. Yeah, there was a lot uh, of five, five minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, four minutes was outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we go to our uh, another segment. Another, another segment. Eric B with the Crusher and Ox Baker. <laughs> oh, Woo. so the, the Crusher and his hundred ton biceps. Uh, he he wants to give a shout out to his his cheering section, Jake 
and and Dylan and Claire and <laughs> Sandra <laughs> and little Bobby. I see you back there. And you know, it's just like his nieces and nephews. <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. that was another thing. Like all the legends, the entire night. Once one person did, it, you know, Eric was like, "God damn it, <laughs> they're all gonna do it now, aren't they?" Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Ox had a great look, and he's actually somewhat decent on the mic. He could have been great as a manager or something. I'll, I I'll, I'll they, say this. They didn't pick him up. Before tonight, we recorded tonight's show. Something mm -hmm. came up, and uh, it was like it, on my YouTube. It was like Luthez versus Ox Bachnar, or what was his name? Ox Baker. Ox Baker, yeah. And it was from like the seven. It was from seventy five, and the dude looked exactly the same. Like <laughs> giant, just like yeah. you know, big handlebar mustache. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he was in more shape, you know, better shape at the time. Yeah, cardiovascular uh, was on point. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I. I Crusher is trying to start a program with Ox Baker. Ox is getting handsy with Eric. It was weird. Yeah. Uh, then we go to Ricky. Uh, then we go to our next match of the night. Uh, the Hollywood Blondes defending their NWA and WCW Tag Team Championship belts against the team of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Shane Douglas. Uh, because it's not Shane Douglas under the Who mask. Who is it? It's Tony Zank. Oh. So Shane Douglas was still out due to injury, um, but he was still advertised for the match. So that's why Tony Zink, uh, the Z was he related to Tom Zink. Oh, sorry. Why did I say Tony? Tom. Oh. Yeah. Tom okay. Zink. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was Tom Zink, the Z man. And, uh, I don't know. It, it was weird. And it made sense why <laughs> steamboat steamboat him come out in masks dressed yeah, as dos and hombres. Mexico colors. Yeah, yeah. Dressed as dos hombres. And they're just like, well, we won in these masks, but one time, so we're going to try it again. Why not? You know? Yeah. But the whole thing was supposed to be that they hid their identities in order to get a shot at the Hollywood Blondes. And these mysterious uh, upstarts win that match and they get a rematch at Slambury. But for some reason, something that we didn't see maybe on WCW Saturday night, they probably exposed themselves as the dos hombres somehow. Because <laughs> Ricky Steve was just like, hey, uh, so listen, <laughs> um, these masks are good luck. Thanks. <laughs> and then the guy doing Shane Douglas just like, <laughs> uh, yeah, brother. You know how they used to do that back in the day? What was that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, Austin and Steamboat start the match. Uh, Austin immediately goes for the mask. Pillman and Steamboat go back and forth. Uh, I guess, I'm just going to say Douglas because that's what I have in my notes. Uh, Douglas works Austin's arm aggressively, then goes for the long hammer lock. Tag to Steamboat, uh, but you know he was working that wrist lock. Uh, Steamboat starts tossing, uh, gets tossed into the cage multiple times. Uh, Ombre is building the heat on Austin. Douglas. Hangs Austin off the top of the cage um, with his feet caught in the top of the cage with his body hanging off. That was excellent. It was a nice spot, hitting multiple splashes. But then the third splash, Austin falls Oops. off the cage and like collides with Douglas in a weird way to yeah, the point where he, even his neck took a nasty bump on the apron. Even to a point where, you know, Tom Zank was like, hey, dude, are you all right, man? Sorry. All right. All right. Uh, Pillman illegally chokes. Uh, Douglas with the towel in the corner with the ropes with the ref's back turn. Uh, Pillman goes for a body splash, but Douglas gets his foot on the uh, his foot up for the boot to Pillman's face. Unfortunately, Pillman was able to get the tag first though, and uh, Austin cuts off Douglas. Uh, Zabisco at one point though says Austin is gonna be uh, he's gonna be up there one day with the legends. You know, you mark my words. As long as his body can keep up, he'll be one of the legends of this industry one day. And he was, he was pretty much exactly right because mm -hmm. Austin had to leave because of, you know, injuries and he was a legend, you know, uh, knees up for Pillman as he came off the turnbuckle steamboat gets the hot tag runs w wild on the blondes, both Pillman and Austin try to leave the cage. Uh, but steamboat slams Austin down, uh, with the electric chair and clothes or, um, crotches Pillman on the top rope. Atomic head drop to the blonde. Stereo corner punches to the blonde. Steamboat climbs to the top of the cage, takes his mask off, <coughs> and hits the blondes with a splash. We get a two count uh, with the bell. Uh, the bell does ring, though. Then Nick Patrick, the referee, has to call it off. 
Uh, Ombres then attempt to whip the blondes into each other, but Pillman reverses Douglas and whips him into Austin, who hits Douglas with the stun gun, the pin, and the win. Austin gets the pin on Tom Zank. It's a good match. The very beginning was slow, but picked up towards the end, and everyone looked really good. So insanely fun match you got some classic wrestlers here with steamboat uh tom zank <laughs> okay he's the exception um but with uh pillman and austin which will be able to enjoy their documentaries very soon on local television well on television well, yeah the uh the a and e one was just on and uh of dark austin. side of the ring is doing pillman yeah and yeah dark side of the ring is doing pillman so that's gonna be good, good stuff. Good stuff. This sh- this match was cool. Did we ever get a Pillman HBK match ever? Is that one of those? I don't think so. Missed opportunities, damn. But you know, it is it is funny how Austin and him did have a promo in WWF. You know, mm-hmm. that was with the gun, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric is uh, then interviewing Stu Hart, Mister Wrestling Two, in the Natural. Somewhat and Dusty and, and, speaks and, and a somewhat sad looking Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, Dusty's just yeah. like, Listen, baby, whoever challenged me earlier than that, who was there? The, the destroyer who was it? Was it the crusher or the assassin? I think it was the assassin, right? It's, it's all the same to me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it was the assassin. He said, He said, My big ass is standing right out here. Let's go, let's go, daddy. Let's wrestle because I'm ready to go. And uh, it's funny because Dusty actually he takes off his jacket. He's like looking around for the guy, and, and <laughs> he's the only one that believably to me. I'm like, all right, Dusty can probably still go. Yeah. It's '93. He went for another what seven years. Mm-hmm. So Eric asked Mister Wrestling to his thoughts, um, and God bless the guy. But uh, I don't think he has any idea who Dusty is talking about because Mister mm-hmm. Wrestling Two is like, well, I'll say this. Whoever challenged this man right here, it should be very afraid because this man will defeat him. And it was very, I was like, okay, cool. Like, you don't know who anybody is right now, do you? Yeah. And why didn't you wash your mask before you came on TV to celebrate this? Come on, guy. Well, yeah. He's like, well, the cameras don't pick up everything. (laughs) Uh, Stu Hart, he's on the mic. He says, well... I have eight sons who are all wrestlers and four daughters, and they're all married to wrestlers. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Stu, great. I know, it's, it's, I know he went, went on to name him. He was like, uh, Jenny married my oldest, married Neidhart. Uh, my youngest married. Uh, to me, it was just like, he, to me, it sounded like he was like, ah, the boys, oh, are, boy. the boys the are wrestlers. Married, boy. He's like, the, bo- the boys are wrestlers, but the girls. They figured out they knew what to do. You know, <laughs> it, it, that's just what it seemed like to me. Like it's total yeah. old school, mm-hmm. like shit. But whatever, I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah, Natty, that Nightheart, that's uh, Stu would be her grandfather, right? Stu is her grandfather, yeah, yeah, because that's her mom's daddy. Yeah, my oldest married Nightheart, and my youngest. Married David Boy, the 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 guy that's gonna be in the ring shortly. <laughs> that guy, that, yes, that British guy. Uh, then we have the NWA World Heavyweight Championship match: Arn Anderson versus Barry Windham. Match of the fucking night. Match of the night, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. There's no question about it. This was a great match, and I didn't, I didn't even think I was gonna like this match, and I loved it. I loved no, every I'm- second of it. I'm a huge Arn Anderson mark, and I remember liking Barry Windham back in the day, and now I remember why. That guy, that guy works, man. It's just, uh, you know, it's a shame WWE didn't do him any favors. Yeah, um, yeah, he, he was definitely should have took the road of Sting and just stayed in, in WCW. Um, let me say this before you get into the rundown. Something you might have missed was this dope-ass Arn Anderson feint that he was going to do a move. Mm-hmm. And then Wyndham fell for it, and uh, Arm does a nice like arm drag or something. Yeah, dude. Arm, or DDT. Arm he does a DDT. Yeah. Uh, so back and forth, working the ropes, belly to belly to Wyndham, strikes to Anderson, DDT to Wyndham. Uh, Arn. Uh, that was it. That was it. There we go. Arn pulled uh, by his arm out of the ring. Wyndham clocks Anderson with a clothesline as Arn is coming off of the ropes. Another DDT to Arn. Arn then uh, flips Wyndham over the top ropes outside, and I ask myself, isn't that a DQ? And I love Shivani because he goes, 
well, isn't that a DQ or not? <laughs> and Shivani, I, I'll say I don't this know about the call. Shivani the entire night looks like some guy who just has to watch this. Because like mm-hmm. there's certain points where he's just like, uh-huh. Like he's talking with Zabisco and he's like, what do you think about the show? Yeah. That's, that's whatever. Didn't you get like Morrow vibes? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a little bit more just like like Morrow's a little bit more animated where Shivani was just like, Well, when does the show end? <laughs> Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, Arn begins working, uh, begins slamming Wyndham into the barricade and uh, busts his head open. Um, this is only okay, though, because of NWA rules. WCW rules would not allow this, but since this is an NWA championship match, it's okay. Uh, Arn working cool. the crowd. And was Arn, Arn was the face here, right? So uh, I don't know no, because the, the horseman. Well, I don't know about this match. This particular match, I he thought he was the face of the match the because that because me. Yeah, well, um, he was also working up the crowd. Was. Yeah, and yeah, he was yeah. also working up the crowd too. So, well, you know, he, just like Hogan, Rock, Rock went in there going in his face, then worked off the crowd and was like, oh fuck, I got to go heel for this one. So that's probably what happened here because Wyndham is leaving the heel faction. And getting kicked out, actually. Yeah. And Arn Anderson is representing the heel faction. That's what, know, yeah. That's trying what to steal the championship. Yeah. So, yeah, they had to roll reverse because of the crowd. Uh, to this point, the though, omni. the blood is pouring down Wyndham's he- uh, face. Um, Arn pounding away on Wyndham's head. Uh, Arn gets, uh, gets to the turnbuckle, and Wyndham drop kicks him off the top to the outside. <clears throat> These two guys go back and forth with Arn just selling his back and exhaustion. Spinebuster to Wyndham. Wyndham then. No one in the history of professional wrestling has a spinebuster that looks as good as Arn Anderson's. I'll take that to any mountain and I'll fight anyone. Wyndham then crawls to the outside and grabs his t- uh, the title, grabs a big gold belt and begins to leave Ar- Anderson. Uh, gets Wyndham. Anderson pushing the ref out. Of, uh, he's pushing the ref around. And um, he, he's, he, he thinks he's going to get DQ'd. He's, he's super worried about it. You could even tell. That's the thing. is like now Anderson is like worried he's going to get DQ'd, but he's the heel, so he shouldn't care. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. even though he should because, I don't know. It's just, it was, I don't know. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. Wyndham grabs his title again and strikes Arn with the title, and Wyndham gets the pin and the win. So fucked finished but i love this match like everything mm-hmm. about it was great i didn't think i was gonna like it at all i thought i was gonna have to skip through it and match of the night this should have headlined right yeah oh yeah definitely yeah no definitely this the main event Ugh. which is next <laughs> the main event of the <laughs> evening the wcw world heavyweight championship match because you know we have to have two world heavyweight title matches i mean we still do in wwe uh, mm-hmm. So the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith versus Big Van Vader. And Vader is extremely fit for him in this. For for Leon, Gee, yeah. many Christmas. Like, because, you know, we were just, like I said, we were d- reviewing late 90s WWE for a second. and Or mid to late 90s. And you see Vader there, and he's not out of shape. Well, I mean, he's a little bit more out of shape than he is here. No, you know, on his singlet, his arm fat was coming out. In WWE. It- in yeah. heat Monday night, uh, Sunday yeah, night yeah, heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to this guy looks trim and ready to work. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so multiple locks, uh, lockups, but nothing happening for a few minutes. Yeah, almost took the nap. Uh, Davy Boy begins to no sell the strikes from Vader. Uh, Vader then begins to unload on Smith in the corner, knocking him down to one knee on the outside or to the outside. Vader then has uh, the ref distracted. Harley Race strikes Smith. Vader goes for a running splash on Smith on the barricade, but Smith evades and Vader topples over the barricade. And then it's just, just to think like 1993, like uh, Vader just like falling in front of you. You're like, okay, (laughs) sorry, Vader. Uh, Smith picks Vader up, slams him back into the ringside area, stalling suplex, almost jackhammer esque to Vader. Uh, You gotta admit, Dave boy Smith is impressive as always. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, half of that was Vader too. You know, sure, himself sure. Up you got to give credit to the other guy, but you know, sometimes he does that. Um, I'm gonna hold you in the air extra long to prove how mm-hmm. strong I am. That's that's some amazing shit. Uh, Vader cuts Smith off with a boot. Uh, that's when he uh, jumps off the rope. Smith catches him, hits a big power slam. 
Smith then clotheslines Vader back to the outside. Fans go wild. And that's when Zabisco goes in this long rant about how size isn't everything. It could actually hinder your endurance and limberness. And I'm just like, dude, Zabisco, whatever you got to prove to whoever, do it on your time, man. Hey, hey, buddy, I was around when you used to walk in the ring with nunchucks and didn't know how to use them. Uh, so yeah, I just, uh, I thought it was a penis reference to me. Uh, Smith mm. goes for a crucifix, but, uh, Vader slams him down. Huge Vader splash to Smith followed by a two count. And that's when Zabisco says, see, most men, Vader size can't go the distance because of their huge size. But Vader is one in a million. He can go the distance. I was like, okay. Calm down, buddy. That was very phallic-y. Uh, Davey bleeding from the nose. I think his nose is busting at this point. Uh, Vader gets Smith on the turnbuckle, goes for a superplex, but Smith reverses and hits Vader with a front-falling suplex. Smith, uh, who has a bleeding nose, goes for a falling headbutt off the top rope. I mean, leave it to the partner of Dynamite Kid to do some stupid shit, right? Yep. Uh, Vader and Smith go back and forth for a bit, exchanging strikes and slams. Vader lays Smith on the mat and goes for a big splash. And, uh, uh, that's when he hits it. But, uh, as soon as he comes down, he's holding his chest and he, you can hear him audibly yell, shit. (laughs) I don't, did he, I don't know if he broke his sternum or he suffered some, but something was going on there. We should Cause, listen to it, yeah. Because he was kind of like holding his chest too for a minute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and Vader. And it's rare that somebody, like, it's always a knee, uh, an appendage, an uh, elbow, well, he, shoulder. Yeah, he, because then he even knocked uh, Smith to the outside and the ref was checking on Vader in the corner. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, Smith then gets the ring. Vader begins pounding away on Smith. Uh, Vader gets Smith on the ground, uh, mounts his back, but Smith lifts him up, hits the electric chair slam. Bulldog makes a brief comeback, but is stopped by Harley Race. Smith strikes Race, then Vader grabs the chair and strikes Bulldog with it. It was a good matchup until that point, I'll be honest. It wasn't horrible, but it was okay. Um, Vader continues to beat down on Smith, and it takes the whole babyface locker room to take him apart. And then all of a sudden... And um, the only guy in the locker room Raider Vader is afraid of, and he want, runs away. He yeah. scurries. Yeah. So, I mean, that was pretty much the show, but for some reason, WCW had to film more time. So they cut to Eric and Magnum TA, like reviewing mm-hmm. what just happened, you know, and yeah. then they cut to Shivani, Zabisco, and Vern Gagne. Um, yeah. I don't know. It was weird. I felt like they should just ended with the match. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much money they had to give to Vern Gagne to show up. Probably, I mean, I mean, how much money did they have to give any of these guys? You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but you know, Vern was like a super competitor. He, he wasn't he the guy that ran AWA? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's one guy that was forever seventy five. That guy, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anytime I seen him, I was like, are you seventy five? Still wrestling? Hmm. He still looks seventy five. Oh my god! No, yeah. I'm kidding. He's anyways. <laughs> that was the show, Slamboree, nineteen ninety three. What are you gonna do? Hey, you know what? I had fun. I'm glad times, it's over. Times. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so am I. But I mean, you know, it's good to go back every once in a while and yeah. see how good we have it now. Yeah, because I th- what was it? I was watching something else. I, th- I was watching SmackDown after this, and I was like, oh my god, this is Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan match this is fucking amazing. <laughs> five stars, five stars. <laughs> this is easily this is easily as good as Okada Omega, you know, with their seven star match. <laughs> so far, twenty twenty one match it, of the year. It was a it was a decent match, but you know, it wasn't. Yeah, you know, I was just comparing. I have it on DVR. I watched it maybe. Yeah, maybe. Anyways, I think that about does it here for us today. mm Hmm. Uh, we will be back in your lives next month with another retro review of some sorts. We don't know yet because our wrestling overlords have not told us what we have to watch. I feel like it's like Mystery Science Theater. Like we just get shoved into a room with mm-hmm. uh, with a giant TV projecting wrestling. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. We have to review this. Um, the fans, feel free to drop us a line. Let us know what you feel like uh, you feel like listening about or uh, flashing back on. I my one suggestion would be keep it 
pay-per-view. pre-WrestleMania 10. Yeah. 15. WrestleMania 15. Before you know, WrestleMania 15. you know, I was thinking about that though, too. Mm-hmm. Cause there are kids who watch this stuff too. Okay. Yeah. And their retro reviews, I mean, are what? 2006, 2007. Mm, that's true. That's so true. like, like I said, if anyone has any suggestions, if you guys really like, Oh, please review this. We'll check your profile. See how old you are. If you're, <laughs> if you're a Gen Xer, um, we're, we're not taking any of if this. You're over, uh, okay. If you're over 50 and suggest anything in the two thousands, no, yeah, <laughs> but if you're a kid and you suggest something from the 2000s, maybe we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll even take 2011. Okay, all right. I think if you're 10, 2011, that's that's fair, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, we're gonna get out of here, and uh, yeah, there we go. Anything else you want to say before Slambury? Before we get out, um, I can't wait for uh, what can I wait for? I, I can't wait for Triple Mania. Triple Mania is coming up. Omega. So does that mean that Omega keeps the AAA title until December? Dude, I don't know. I think I'm starting to get kind of mad. Not mad. It's the wrong word. Um, this whole like belt collector thing. Like it, it's eventually like companies are going to be like, well, we want to push somebody else. I think that's going to happen and it's going to be to their benefit. I think Andrade should win the title. Yeah, yeah, and by December that should be around the time when you start splitting up the 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 gems. Is that when Triple Mania is? No. Yep, December. Triple Mania is in December. Uh, historically, it's in December. It's the December pay per view. I thought it was sooner than that. Please Google it, loco. I mean, all right, let's get yeah, out of no. here. <laughs> yeah, no, I read an article that said historically it's it's ran. Oh, now this one says August. Historically, it's ran in December, so uh, who knows? Oh. Triple Mania. We'll see what happens. Will Andrade win the title? Will Kenny Omega be the belt hog? Yeah, I love how we fuck up at the end of the show. It's usually me. Yeah, it's better than the beginning, right? Oh, yeah, that's when you got the most eyes. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.